I was recently given the unique invitation and opportunity to go check out Twin City Seed Company, a local agricultural and grass seed distributor located right here in the Twin Cities in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I sat down with Paul, Andy, and their team to understand what landed them the number one spot in Minnesota's grass seed dealer rankings at Star Tribune and understand exactly what brought in the 30 years of success that they've witnessed ever since coming in and becoming a localized monopoly in the grass seed space here in the Twin Cities and upper Midwest. Follow along with me. We're going to get a nice behind the scenes look and understand who Twin City Seed Company is, what they do, and how you can get the best grass seed in your lawn this year and for many years to come. Let's take a look. I'm James Wolfen. I'm a conservation specialist here with Twin City Seed. I did my master's at the University of Minnesota, housed in both uh, the entomology department and the turf grass science lab. And then I came over here to kind of work more on turf grass and work on some bee lawn mixes and some other mixes that we're really proud of. Very cool. Andy, how about yourself? I'm Andy, uh, Andy Keating. Um, been with Twin City Seed for six years now. And my background, I got a bachelor's degree in plant science from North Dakota State, go bison. <laughs> um, and I also have an MBA in business. Uh, I was in the golf industry for over 14 years. Uh, extensive knowledge of how to maintain grass. Uh, doing that profession on the maintenance side. Um, but, you know, lifestyles change. You get married, you have a family. Uh, it takes up a lot of your time, so I wanted to stay in the same industry, and seed was a perfect fit. So I've loved it ever since I've started here. Met a lot of people and I've learned a lot of stuff too. Yeah, awesome. So, Awesome. Well, uh, thanks again for having me. This is really cool for me because uh, it's not often we get to share a behind the scenes look that what go, all goes into producing seed and, and, and packaging it up and then really delivering it to the consumers, right? So what all goes in here, right? You guys obviously have, a, we're sitting in a warehouse full of seed. Um, a, a little bit of history on Twin City Seed. I think it's really interesting to understand where you guys started um, and where you guys are today. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you guys came to where you are? Yeah. So celebrating our uh, 30th anniversary this year. The company started in 1992 under John Glatley. His footprint here started off very small uh, as far as the warehouse space. Uh, then we've expanded to over, I think it's uh, uh, seven different spaces as far as how we've expanded in our warehouse space. Over that time, seed companies where we purchase seed from, from the producers out in Oregon uh, have developed new genetics as far as uh, different species of grasses with your Kentucky bluegrasses. I know turf type tall fescue has come a long way um, since the early 90s. Uh, then fine fescues, which James will get into as well. That scope from 1992 to where we are now, as far as the technology that goes into the grass seed is tremendous. Um, and we are here to educate people on that. Tell me a little bit about all of the verticals that you guys are in and, and really how the business is made up. Started out as a wholesale, we're starting to get into retail now. Um, but as far as the scope of what we do, we're into agriculture, uh, as far as pasture mixes, uh, food plot for wildlife like uh, deer hunting and turkey hunting, um, and also just attracting wildlife to your property, um, but also cover crops, forage, um, and then also when you get into the turf grass side, we do a lot of construction. We work with a lot of local even municipals, uh, cities, their streets and their parks and whatnot. And then you go into landscapers um, as far as their overseeding programs. Now we're just starting to get in to retail and we're growing that way and we're also learning a lot. And James is here to help us out with that too. This is where all the magic happens. This is where we store all the seed, all the erosion control, and we do all the blending. Over here you'll see we store mainly the uh, agriculture seed which you would get with forage and pasture and cover crop uh, behind you it's going to hold a lot of our elite cultivars that we sell on our website and then we have staging area over here where customers will come and pick up their seed uh, whether it be a pallet or a bag as we come around here you'll see our small pack station uh, here we bag one three five and ten pound bags uh, for retail customers um, we can go through a lot of seed in a day, especially when we got multiple guys working at the station. So this is the company's original blender that started in 19, started the company in 1992. 
Um, it's never been greased, so when they say uh, they don't make them like they used to, this is this defines it. Uh, holds about 700 pounds of seed. Basically, all the seed gets dumped into that hopper there and comes out this little spout here. So what happens? There's an auger that goes all the way to the top, and then kind of fountains out the seed and it comes down and it just continuously does that to mix up the seed. That's where it started. And that's where it started that's and actually cool. this warehouse space too. A small, small space. Very cool. And then uh, we go through here. Then this, we store all of our turf grass over here. All of our bulk turf grass. Um, a lot of our high-end stuff that we get in bulk will be over here as well. But with our main, um, our main mixing station will be is over here. This is our big bulk blender. It does about 3,000 pounds at a time max. What happens is every, all the seed gets dumped into here, just like the red blender. It gets augered up, and then fountains out, and just continually gets mixed like that. Then we drop it down into this hopper here, and then there's a belt that brings it up to the to this external hopper. And then we have a scale that weighs out 50 and 25 pound bags on the on the dot. And then gets tagged, sewn up, and put on a pallet. So this is shipping. where all your bigger bags get bagged up. And there's, you were telling me earlier about this, there's an actual scale that measures from the top to make things a little bit easier for you and the team on, on yep. bagging. So it'll hold a bag here and it will drop, it'll measure the weight of the bag, the seed, the seed that's going in the bag until it hits 25 or 50 pounds and then it stops. And then you release the bag and you send it through the belt to get sewn and tagged and right on the, the ring there to get, there's usually a pallet there, obviously. Yep. And, um, eventually, it, we can stack up to 2,000 pounds of seed on a pallet, which you see mostly there. And then we have our own wrapper in the back and it goes out on the truck. Average homeowner, how could they find you? How could they, how can they acquire your seed? Yeah, now, you know, traditionally when you think of a wholesale operation, it's moving mostly 50, 25 pound bags. But now that we're, we've got this website that's fully optimized for e-commerce, now everything from five, 10 pound bags is available where whether you want to get the you know, perfect high-end, dark, dense uh, Kentucky bluegrass blend, or if you're looking for something a little bit more low input, something like a low growth fescue mix or one of our B-Lawn mixes, uh, all of that's now available from you know, the comfort of your own home. You could watch the twins and buy similar grass to what they're playing on. The, the scope that uh, we offer to a retail customer is, I think, more so than anybody else that you would find out of either a store or an online website. Uh, basically, the customer, uh, if they want a high-end, high-maintenance lawn, or if they want a drought-tolerant, uh, less stressful lawn, or a, a low-maintenance lawn, we can design a mix, or if we have a house mix here that's already meant for what they what their needs are yeah so, um, from, so from hearing you're right it, it's basically whatever you're looking for you guys can cater it, yeah basically so whether you're a beginner whether you're an intermediate whether you're an advanced or kind of yeah. consider yourself an expert chances are you can probably have yeah. a solution here for them yeah and if you really want to put us to work if you, if you don't have if we don't have a variety that you're looking for on our website you can give us a call and we can try to source it Offhand, how many cultivars do you guys have in the warehouse, and what, what, what are you guys about there? Yeah, it's several hundred, <laughs> so there's quite a few. Um, not everything's on our website. Our website's catered more to um, what are the common variety, common cultivars are out there on the market right now. Okay. Um, we do have some more that goes past that, uh, but that's meant for more of the wholesale end. But uh, no, yeah, several several hundred, and the, and there's also um, a few that we don't have in house, just because they got lost in production. Sure. The the crop that crop failed. Sure. So it's just like farming; a crop can fail, and that specific variety is that's not available this year. Makes and sense. And you're based off of the drought in the Pacific Northwest last year. You've, you're seeing that more than ever. 
Uh, there's probably 20 different varieties that we don't have in this year that are just gone. It failed or there was such a minute amount that was available that it got eaten up by some of the big purchasers like Scott's and sure. Pennington and whatnot. Sure, definitely. Um, and, and yeah, we obviously mentioned that this year is going to be a little bit of a unique year when it comes to grass seeds. So. The sh you know, we, we've heard shortages. We know that that has been kind of forecasted, um, but it's going to be felt this year. So I don't know if you want to go talk a little bit into yeah. that um, and, and maybe some of the struggles that you're running into, what your personal forecast is in terms of, sure. you know, what, what, you're, what you can see and tell yep. us a little bit about that. So as far as the, the shortage goes, yes, there is uh, less of a supply this year than there has been in the past. The shortage you're going to see is on the clean seed. Sure and the, the higher end seeds. Those are gonna be the ones that get purchased first and probably you won't see them by the time of August. There's gonna be seed to buy if you're late to the game, um, but you might have to deal with a little other crop and weed yeah. on your tag, which is still more than likely gonna be less than a percent on either end. Good advice. So. We kind of talked about what makes Twin City seed, regardless of the level of the homeowner of really what they're looking for. What, what would you say you would be looking for in Twin City seed that maybe some other seed producers or seed carriers don't necessarily have that puts you atop of them? Our staff here, our office staff, uh, a few call in here, that person that's gonna that is answering the phone has a tremendous amount of knowledge of and also if you're looking say you call in you don't really know what to look for we're gonna work work our way through that your questions and figure out a solution to make your lawn successful to make it look good to make it what you want uh, depending on what you've seen with your lawn in the past or what you get back from a soil test or what type of soil you have even whether you're sandy, loam, clay, we'll figure it out. We got it. We got what you need. Something I'm curious on is is understanding maybe where your where your grass seed is showcased. So obviously you, you've got a lot that's out there. Where where are some of the highlights for you? You can uh, find our the pure blue Kentucky bluegrass blend at the U.S. Bank Mall right outside U.S. Bank Stadium. Cool. Um, that came in as sod um, from a KLM sod farm. Uh, they grew the pure blue Kentucky bluegrass blend and then uh, company Peterson companies have take, has taken care of that since and overseeded with the same mix. Um, other areas, uh, TCS, TCO Performance Center, sure. the Vikings, uh, Target Field, uh, CHS Field, Allianz Field, we do most of the pro sports. Uh, Fargo Moorhead Redhawks, if you want to go sure. up there. Sure, really cool. Uh, yeah. Really cool. So uh, something I didn't know coming in here, you guys are on Target Field, you guys are on Allianz, yeah. um, which baseball field for the Minnesota Twins, MLS soccer uh, for the Minnesota United, which is really cool. Um, what all went into that? They start out by sodding their fields, so they contract out a sod farmer. The fields get sodded because their seasons are so long. I mean, you're basically out, like the soccer game started back in, what, February? Right. Ridiculous. Right? I know, I know. Uh, and then they keep going, so the only way they can't grow in uh, grass from seed it has to be sodded, but that grass gets worn out sure. right from it being played on so much so they got to bring in seed to overseed the areas that get damaged um, divots and so they got divot mixes and whatnot and then you know football fields up the hash marks uh, all get seeded so now super awesome they, we we try to uh, source varieties that they got from the sod they purchased okay and that's how we specifically design those mixes for them it's more of a request asking them asking us what they need and they're like okay we'll find it sure sure yeah. that's really cool and, and and just being a sports fan i think that's awesome what blends are at something like target field that you would give them shade tolerant kentucky bluegrass that's what was what it right field is that they have the a lot of shade sure so they try to put in shade tolerant high-end kentucky bluegrasses um something like bewitched okay that uh, would be a good example and then yeah then the, High use fields like soccer fields and fo the football fields, uh, you'll see some more uh, perennial ryegrass oh, yeah, going sure. in there. Um, but mainly, mainly it's Kentucky bluegrass. Yeah, very cool. One thing that we talked about uh, before coming here was just kind of the the differences between a coated seed versus uncoated or non-coated. Um, tell me a little bit more about why that's important. What you guys are, why you think that's important. Go from there. Yeah, I think just in general, it's important that 
a consumer that anyone knows what they're purchasing when they're taking a bag off the shelves at a Bachman's or wherever it is that you get your grass seed. Where if you buy a five pound bag, um, a seed coating is included in that total weight. So it's possible that if you're buying a bag that's say 50% coated, there's only two and a half pounds of grass seed mm. in there, two and a half pounds of seed coating, typically a clay coating. So where that can kind of get tricky is when you have less seed in the bag and more of a coating, it drives down the price. And so many of us, I mean myself included up until recently when I really became a kind of a turf grass nerd, it was just let's buy what's cheapest on the shelf, throw yeah. it down in my lawn. But you want to make sure that you're getting you know, the best value. You want to make sure you're getting as much pure live seed or just germinating plant material as possible. So making sure you go with an uncoated seed, high quality uh, species, cultivars, etc. That really just protects your purchase. If you're one of those people who's out there reseeding your lawn every year, trying to figure out why it might not be taking, um, it might be due to quality or because you're not getting as much germinating plant material as you thought when you purchased that bag off the shelf. Something that you brought up as well was just the, the different, you know, what goes into actually what's on the label, right? And I think that's really important and quite honestly, a light bulb moment for me of really understanding what's in the bag and what you're putting down and maybe why people aren't maybe successful as they would hope for when buying grass seed. When I'm looking at a bag of grass seed in the store, the first thing I do is turn it around and look at a few different stats. So the first thing I look at is purity. What that tells you is how much of what that of what's in that bag is um, germinating plant material. You know, is grass seed. What I also look at is the germination rate, where when you spread that out, how much of it is actually going to be able to germinate and grow, um, and kind of the different measures that uh, kind of give you that cumulative purity for grass seed is how much weed seed is in there, how much inert matter is in there. So you want to have those numbers, the inert matter, the weed seed as low as possible. You want to see that germination and the purity as high as possible. Where if you see a bag and it's alarmingly inexpensive, you might want to turn that bag around and make sure you're not dealing with germination rates that are really low. Uh, that's got, it might have a lot of weed material in there or something that you just don't want in the bag. So um, yeah, what's great for us is there's a lot of transparency in this. You just turn that bag around yeah. and the stats are there. So a good bag of seed, you'll typically see anywhere from 97 to 98% purity. That, that's the purity is uh, the percentages equaled up of each individual species. And you'll see your inert other crop and weed seed. That's going to be your small percentages. And as far as germination, typically anywhere between 85 and 90% germination is going to be a quality seed. A huge thanks to everyone over at Twin City Seed Company for allowing me to come on in and tell your story to the masses. I'm going to put everything that, th that you guys need to know down in the comments below, a link to all of their information and how you can too get the best grass seed in the upper Midwest in your lawns this summer and in years to come. I'm Ope. If you have any questions, drop them in below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Take care.